What's happening guys? Keith here with another Impact Wrestling Review. So tonight we are going to take a look at the August 2nd edition of Impact. Um, good show, top to bottom, very solid, no real complaints about the show. Um, we open the show with some action. We have Sue Young and the Undead Bridesmaid versus Kiera Hogan and Allie. Good little match here. Um, so Sue Young comes out first with all the Undead Brides. They enter the ring. Kiera and Allie come out next. The Undead Brides stand between the entrance ramp and the ring. So as Allie and Kiera head into the ring, they clear out all the Brides. Um, Kiera ends up hitting a suicide dive on the Undead Bridesmaid. All the Brides go outside and congregate kind of around her. Allie gets up on the turnbuckle and hits a twisting crossbody onto all of them on the outside. Action finally goes back in the ring. Um... Their offense was kind of short-lived as Sue Young and the Undead Bridesmaid kind of cut the ring in half. Um, Allie is able to get the hot tag. She goes on the offensive. She hits the best super kick ever for a near fall. Uh, Kiera takes out the Undead Bridesmaid, but Sue takes out Kiera with a panic switch of her own. Uh, Sue goes for the panic switch on Allie. Allie reverses it. She hits the code breaker for the win. So Allie pinning the current knockouts champion. Something big there. And, of course, out brings Tessa Blanchard. She comes out. She takes care of Allie. And that's that. So we go backstage, and Tessa cuts a promo. And, uh, obviously, toward Allie. She says that if Allie thinks she's going to get a knockout championship shot before her, she is sadly mistaken. So that was the reason for her attack previously. Uh, for some reason, we get the announcement at this point of Aries versus Eddie Edwards next week. I mean, uh, Aries was scheduled to defend his championship against Anthony Corelli's student, uh, Dustin Cameron, later on in the evening. I know we all knew he wasn't going to drop the title, but still, whatever. Uh, up next, we have the OGs versus Nathan Smokes and Ray Steele, I believe their names were. Um, just some local enhancement talent, I'm guessing. Uh, yeah, this was a squash match. Not a surprise here. Obviously, this was leading to a promo by King. He grabs the mic after the match. Uh, they say that they took out Conan and LAX, and they took their pretty little titles, too. Crowd chanting LAX. King starts interacting with them. He says that he wants LAX to come out too, but they won't. At this point, King says LAX 5150 are dead. So right now we hear LAX's gunshots go off. Santana and Ortiz rush the ring. Um, they attack the OGs. I guess Santana took out King and Hernandez on the outside. This left homicide with Ortiz in the ring. Uh, Ortiz at this point pulls out a hatchet and is ready to behead uh, Homicide. Uh, at this point, you see security just rushing down the ramp into the ring. They end up, uh, kind of, I guess they wrestled it away from him. Um, homicide ended up leaving the ring. The uh, LAX beat up the security guards, and that was the end of that segment. So, uh, we're looking to uh, commit murder inside the wrestling ring now. So this continues the storyline, and they always need to go that extra step. So good stuff here. It was very entertaining. We go backstage, and LAX is screaming at Conan for backing them off in the fight. Uh, Conan says that the OGs wanted them to get angry because it was a trap. Conan said that he raised the OGs, and he knows what they will do next. Conan said that they are scared, and he says timing is everything. So good stuff here. there. This was a really good promo by Conan. It was just the back and forth was so good between him and LAX. Uh, you could definitely see how beat up LAX was. Santana had some nasty gashes on his uh, neck. He had bandaged all up. Ortiz, I believe, had stuff all over his face as well. So they went through a hell of a war last Sunday. Um, and when you're taping the show two day, uh, a day after and uh, two days after the show, it's... Uh, very hard to recover from injuries in that quick of a time period. Then we have a Chris Jericho Cruz advertisement. Um, they announced the LAX versus Young Bucks match. Good to see this. I think this helps out everybody. People that were unaware of it happening watching Impact. They now know they that it is happening and there is still available cabins. So good stuff there. Um, yeah. 
Then we have the GWN flashback, PD Williams versus Jushin Thunder Liger from Sacrifice. I believe it was 06, 12 years ago. PD looks like a much different person, but still manages to move around the ring pretty good. We get an OVE promo. Uh, they say that they don't value anyone's opinions except for theirs. And then they hype up the main event, which is going to be the Lucha Bros versus the Chris Brothers, which is a fantastic main event. Um, I noticed that Sammy Callahan was wearing a sling this week. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but was he wearing one last week? I don't think he was, but I could be wrong. But hey, at least he didn't urinate on anybody this week. So up next, we have the Desi Hit Squad versus KM and Falaba. Uh, this was KM trying to help. Fala find his mean streak, I guess that's what they called it. Um, so this was him kind of giving him directions throughout the entire match. At one point, he told him to pull, I think it was Rohit's hair, and then he was going to use a finger poke to the eye. Unfortunately, Fala Ba was distracting the referee. The Desi Hit Squad took advantage of it, and they end up getting the victory. So more miscommunication, but when they were on top, the crowd was super behind them. Like I said, they really have something here between these two guys. The crowd is super into their matches, and it's good to see. Um, you get Desi Hit Squad, another victory. We learn next week it will be the Desi Hit Squad against Taiji Ishimori and P.D. Williams after the attacks that were set on them last week. Uh, and then we go backstage, and Anthony Corelli is backstage training Dustin and giving him some pep talk. And then we get an interview with Alicia, and well, Alicia conducting the interview with Johnny Impact. You know, Johnny Impact says that Congo Kong is a hard man to find these days. Uh, he says when he was thrown into the steps, he got the message loud and clear. At this point, Jacobs walks up, and he does his whole good guy spiel, and gets punched in the face by Johnny. And he says that he wants the monster, and he's not going to ask again. Um, so that is going to continue. I would assume we will get a match either next week or the week after and then we have the world title match with austin aries defending against dustin cameron so this was basically austin aries messing with dustin the entire you know couple of minutes uh to start the match and then they start get to getting into a pushing contest dustin ends up hitting an arm drag and then a judo throw uh, aries messes with him some more uh he hits a forearm and then a brain buster he goes to pin him then he pulls him up, and he's just looking at Corelli while he does it. And he goes for a second brain buster. Corelli gets up on the apron, throws in the towel, which Aries catches. Um, Aries then locks in the last chancery. This brings Corelli into the ring. Uh, Corelli, or Aries wants Corelli to hit him. However, Corelli hits him with a low blow. Uh, Aries ends up backing out of the ring onto the stage. And he gets attacked from behind by Eddie Edwards again with a kendo stick. So, we are getting that match next week. Eddie Edwards versus Austin Aries. Surprised they didn't go a little longer with this. Not sure what the whole Austin Aries and Corelli endgame is going to be because, well, they've said numerous times that Corelli is not cleared to wrestle. So, I wonder how long and if this will be something that we will actually get in the future. Um, let's see. We, have, we go backstage and uh, Alicia is interviewing Alicia Edwards. Uh, she said she is going to put her personal issues aside and focus on getting back in the ring. Eddie walks up. He apologizes to Alicia after saying he's done a lot of soul searching recently. And Edward said things will be different because next week I will be world champion. Uh, Alicia says, Eddie, you are out of your mind. So more stuff going on between them. Nothing is back to normal. So then we have an interview with Scarlett Bordeaux, and this is conducted by Bob Kapoor, some random schlep they found. Um, of course, Bob has never seen a beautiful woman like this before, so he's tripping over his words. Scarlett calls him Bobo because apparently that's all he can get out of his mouth. And she says that men around here aren't used to seeing women as beautiful as her. Uh, but she says, the smoke show is here to make wrestling sexy again. So I wonder how long they're going to continue these interviews and promos. I think they've hit their point. I would like to see her maybe interact with some of the knockouts um, and go from there. Hopefully her mat first match will be soon. Uh, we go backstage and Grado is talking to Joe Hendry and Katarina. 
about Eli Drake being the biggest dummy and hating on his gift last week. He walks up to Eli. He challenges him to a tag match between himself and Joe Hendry. However, Eli doesn't have a partner, so Grado thinks that means they win automatically. Uh, at this point, Eli kind of walks off screen for a second, grabs Caleb Conley. He grabs Trevor Lee, so they walk in. They're arguing who's going to be his partner, and Eli's just basically like, I got a partner. Let's go out to the ring and do this. Um, then we have that match. Uh, I wasn't sure if that was the next segment, but it was. So Grado and Joe Hendry versus Eli Drake and Trevor Lee. Uh, Trevor Lee and Caleb attack Grado and Hendry before the match. Um, they were going back and forth who was going to be Eli's partner, so good stuff there. Uh, Eli works over Grado to start the match. Grado constantly tries to go for a tag, but Caleb Conley ends up knocking Joe Hendry off the apron. At this point, Katarina kind of goes toward uh, Caleb Conley, and Joe Hendry grabs her and holds her back. This distracts Grado. Eli hits him with the gravy train. And that is it. They get the victory. Um, not much going on there. It was a pretty quick match, but they're continuing the storyline. Great to see Eli back in the ring, along with Trevor Lee. Uh, maybe we have something here with the three of them. It could be interesting. Give them all something to do as well. Uh, then we have Rohit and Gersinder backstage celebrating their victory. Gama Singh comes up and slaps him. So that, that happened. Uh, and then Matt Seidel's backstage. He cuts a promo saying the X Division Championship chose Brian Cage. What he lost was a material thing, and material things mean nothing to him. He says he has learned a lesson from this, and he doesn't know the whole way yet. He needs to open his third eye wider. Another really good promo by Matt Seidel. Very convincing. He sounded super confident. Um, I like what they're doing here. And next week, we are getting Matt Seidel versus Pentagon Jr. That should be a fantastic match. Very much looking forward to that. And that brings us to the main event of the Chris Brothers versus Pentagon and Phoenix. So before we get into the match, I keep seeing rumors about WWE being interested in Pentagon Jr. and Phoenix. <sighs> they would just ruin them so, so badly. Uh, outside of Rey Mysterio, when's the last time a masked wrestler had a really good run? Please let me know, guys. Um, they'd end up being fodder on 205 Live, probably. Uh, anyway, back to the match. So, Pentagon throws Phoenix over the ring ropes, and he kicks both Chris brothers. That's how we start the match. Both teams kind of go back and forth. Uh, the Chris hit a pair of suicide dives onto the Lucha brothers. Chris end up uh, controlling on the outside attacking uh lucha bros end up hitting a super kicks then they both hit tope con helos to the outside on the chris brothers action goes back in the ring pentagon and phoenix are in control obviously until the third man sammy callahan gets involved the chris constantly try to remove phoenix's mask throughout the match they were telling a good story here um constantly making him unable to tag pentagon jr in uh the chris brothers end up tying both masks together they hit them with a pair of super kicks. They hit a spike tombstone on Phoenix. They get a near fall there. Uh, Lucha Brothers end up building up some offense at this point. They hit Dave Chris with a spiked package pile driver. Uh, that gets broken up by Jake Chris. And then they hit another one on Dave for the victory. Fantastic main event. Both teams very good. Um, and then after that match, we go backstage and we have Killer Cross. And he says, a moment of realization is worth a thousand prayers. I wonder what you realize in your final moments. And then he grabs out his card, drops it on a fallen Anthony Corelli, and that is that. So a little interesting there. I wonder if there's something going on between Austin Aries and Killer Cross. Maybe he will be some sort of hired hitman. That's what they're going with. But like I said, overall, good show. I enjoyed it top to bottom. Solid stuff. Hopefully the ratings are good. Um, so lots of positive things. So we continue to feel the positive vibes from Slammiversary. And next week's show looks good as well. So that is pretty much all I have for you guys today. Thanks for checking out my video. I will see you guys back on Sunday for another edition of the Impact Report. And until then, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye.